Good morning, y'all. Alright, so this morning has been really interesting. I didn't hear my 5 o'clock alarm. I'm pretty sure Johnny turned it off for me because he wanted to surprise me by waking me up with a coffee. So I'm pretty sure he turned off my alarm. Then, I get woken up by my 6 o'clock alarm because he didn't know I had a 6 o'clock alarm. And then, uh... I laid back down because I noticed that he wasn't in the bed and I was like he's gonna come and say goodbye then so I was waiting for him to do that and I fell back to sleep by accident um, and then while I was sleeping I was uh, just laying there and then all of a sudden my beautiful Johnny brought me this now, I know it's quite a while later because Lord knows today, this morning was really rough on me to get up. I'm still quite tired, and soon the coffee machine's gonna go off and start brewing coffee. And then I'll have some more coffee, which will probably help me way better than a Starbucks. Sorry to say, but Starbucks does not wake me up anymore. Um, I need something like stronger. Anyway, excuse me for yawning. Anyway, so, um, last night I had planned to talk about a certain subject today, which is going to be heavy and deep and big. See, it's not so much of a big issue, but it's being turned into a big Okay, so here's the context in a nutshell. Back in the day, like when I was growing up, it was not unheard of for boys to brag about girls to the extent where they would exaggerate, oh, I've kissed a girl, or oh, I've touched her boobs, or you know, whatever. Now, that wasn't a big deal back then, you know, that was something boys do, right? And over the years, apparently that's changed because now that's considered rape culture. Come on, guys. This is, like, serious stuff that you're, like, instilling in kids. And it's, like, it's stupid. Okay? That's the first thing that's dumb. Boys should be excited about meeting girls. Boys should want to talk about girls. Right? Just like girls talk about boys. Nowadays, girls do what boys used to do, and they talk about, you know, oh, I done this with him, or I done that with him, and all this stuff. And it's not a big deal when girls do it, but when boys do it, it's rape culture. It's toxic masculinity, and all this crap, right? So, it that's the first thing that bothers me. Double standards. Second thing. Uh... When girls and boys are dating, like when they're like, you know, teenager, 14, 15-ish, they're going to ask each other a bunch of questions, like some weird questions, some sexual questions, some other questions. That's just the way it is when people are dating. At least to me, that's normal. Like when I was 14, 15 and I was dating... I used to ask my boyfriend questions, he used to ask me some questions, and sometimes they were considered inappropriate questions, but you know, we were dating, and we were exploring, and it's what people do, okay? It's what children do. Now, even if you're a Christian child, or a non-Christian child, there are temptations in this world, right? There's a lot of them. There's temptation for porn, there's temptation for having sex before marriage there's a lot of temptation a lot and in this day and age it's part of our culture to have sex before marriage it's part of our culture to um, do those kind of inappropriate non-christian things and it's seen as normal all right so that's the context boys talking about girls inappropriately behind their back okay but admiring them. That's the first thing. Second thing, 
girlfriend boyfriend talking about sexual stuff okay that's the second thing the third thing is rumors I don't know why people have to spread rumors but anyway so those are the two contexts in which what happened so um, the situation was that this is come from a pastor's son okay so a pastor's son had a girlfriend was talking to her inappropriately and then talking with his best friend about the girl inappropriately okay now they're kids this is a time when they make mistakes and learn from them back when we were kids the only difference between now and then is now we have the internet and we have social media and whatever you do is now public to everyone so everyone's involved in your relationship everyone's involved in your decisions and how you speak and what you do and it's ridiculous kids should be allowed to be kids without it being blown up as if oh this is the end of the world this is the worst thing in the whole world everybody should go to jail they're freaking kids let them be kids you know they grow up and they learn i did clearly come on guys <sighs> anyway it got blown way out of proportion it, it was two pastors kids that were involved and now the parents want like the pastors to step down and anyway the point i'm bringing why i'm bringing this up is is because i found it really strange that another group of christians called calvinists were saying, oh, this isn't normal, these kids are abused, obviously they're abused in their home, so they have to abuse kids outside the home, and that's not what happened at all. Nobody abused anybody, nobody did anything, like, over the top. It was discussions privately, and people do that, okay? Um, it's just... It makes me angry because the pastor that's involved is a very good pastor and he does not deserve this at all and it made me really sad i've been praying about it all night and even this morning and honestly i don't see anything wrong with what happened Other now after this calvinist exposed all these screenshots okay He made a video, like weeks later, saying, don't, don't post the screenshots of the children talking. It's, it's not their fault. They're, they didn't do anything wrong. So he admitted that there was nothing wrong going on. But he like, exposed this. Now he's coming after the parents. He's saying it's all the parents fault this happened. All the parents fault they weren't looking after their kids and watching what they were doing and blah 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 oh what about the other like there was uh three females and four males involved in this thread of discussions and they were all between the ages of 14 and 17 okay what about the other kids? Why is it only the pastor's kids that are getting ostracized? I mean, there was more than one kid involved. More than two kids involved, in fact. But only the pastor's sons are being, like, dragged through the mud. And only the pastors are the ones who need to step down and be arrested and whatever else they're, they're calling for. Like, what is wrong with this world? And how can you call yourself a Christian and you're doing this uh, to another Christian man? Aren't we supposed to love each other? In <sighs> so it was a big mess. I was wondering, I was like praying for discernment like last night on like whether or not I should continue to listen to the pastor that I like to listen to on YouTube. And the answer is yes, because I don't feel this was unnormal for kids. Even if you're a Christian kid growing up in a Christian Baptist home, 
you're going to be tempted by the world. You're going to do stupid things in your youth. That's what youth do. And we cannot expect that a pastor's son is going to act like Jesus and be sinless and faultless. That is just, that's just stupid. Okay, that is just a stupid mindset. Pastors' kids will sin. They will, you know, screw up. It's just something. All this to say this. I don't see anything wrong with what happened. Honestly, it was just, to me, it was normal teenager folly, okay? It was just normal teenager folly. They fooling around, doing stupid things, talking stupid crap, like teenagers do, and they learn their lesson. I'm sure they learn their lesson. They're learning that the world is watching every little move and word that they say. And I'm pretty sure they will not be doing that again. Or any of it again. I'm just hoping and I'm praying that the pastor I really, really like does not actually resign and step down. Because we need him in the world. We need him preaching. We need him spreading the word and winning souls. We need him. We need him bad. And just to be clear, I find these people, these so-called Christians, to be fake Christians. They're fake. They ain't even a real Christian. Because there is no real Christian out there that would come this hard after another Christian over something that they probably did in their youth. Just saying. Hypocrite. Blind guide. Viper. You are a wolf in sheep's clothing. You need to step away from this situation. Get your head on straight. Pray to Jesus and repent for your hateful, sinful heart. Because you should not be uh, having these kinds of feelings towards another uh, Christian. You should not be thinking these horrible thoughts and wishing this much hatred towards them. That is evil. Evil, evil, evil. I'm just saying. So, that's what I had to say about goes out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. There's actually a series of parables from chapters 20 through 22 where Jesus is illustrating some of the same truths over and over again. I want to look at those tonight. But beginning verse number one, the Bible reads, Matthew uh, 20, verse one, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the goodman of the house, saying, these, have, these last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am... Instagram like updated and like ruined it for me. Like I don't even know how to use it now. Ugh, I'm surprised I found this. Anyway. Tomorrow is Lucas's birthday party, so we gotta go to bed and wake up super early because we're gonna be love you. We're going to be blowing up balloons and putting them right in front of his bed like we did with Logan and the happy birthday banner and I already wrapped his gifts and made his uh, birthday card and tomorrow um, 
I just bought snacks. I didn't have, uh, I don't think I'll have any energy to make any. So, yeah, I'm going to go and upload this to YouTube and then find a sermon, lay down, and pray and go to sleep, basically. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. And I hope everybody had a wonderful Friday. And I will catch y'all tomorrow morning. So good night. God bless. Catch you later. Mwah.